Yo, in today's video, we'll be looking at scary and creepy TikToks that you should not watch before bed. And guys, today's gonna be the last day for you guys to send me in those creepy videos that you guys have been finding. Make sure you head over to my Instagram page, follow me, and then send me a message. And once I get the compilation together, I'm gonna react to it tomorrow. But today is the last day, so if you got any videos, don't forget to send them to me on Instagram. But let's get to the video. This is the scary story about sneaking out. One summer night, a girl named Kim snuck out of her house to go to a party. When she got to the party, she started saying hi to all of her friends, got a couple drinks, and started having a great time. Later that night, when the party ended and everybody started to leave, Kim started walking home. And the whole time walking home, she had the strangest feeling that somebody was watching her. Mm. So Kim began walking a little bit faster. Then out of nowhere, a man dressed in all black appeared on the road. Kim then let out a terrifying scream as the man sprinted towards her. The next morning, Kim's parents were woken up by somebody knocking on the door. When Kim's father looked through the peephole, he saw Kim's face. So he immediately opened the door. But what he saw when he opened that door haunts him to this day. It was Kim's severed head hanging from a nail mm. above the door, with her head directly in front of the peephole. Mm. Kim's murderer was never found and to this day the case remains open. And the scary part is, this man could be out there still doing the same exact thing he did the kid. Here's my honest opinion about- mm. Kids, do not sneak out at night, especially not by yourself. Certain horror movies might get a little controversial and some feathers might be ruffled, but I don't give a damn. As above, so below is extremely overrated. Yes, I said it. I know some of y'all mm. might get really mad at me, but I don't give a fuck. The way people gas this movie, and when I finally gave it a chance, I was just sitting there like, but this movie is nothing but an hour and 40 minutes of piss poor decisions after piss poor decisions. This whole movie could have been avoided. It was all right. As impactful as the Blair Witch Project is, it pains me to say that movie is really not that great. Like, mm -hmm. I understand what it did for the horror genre, what it did for the found footage genre, and what it did for film marketing. I think it was amazing. However, I think those aspects of the movie are better than the movie itself. One of those movies that's bad, but it gets a pass because of what it did. You know what I'm saying? This one might really get y'all mad. <laughs> as terrible as the Nightmare on M Street remake what? 2010 is it is still better than a good majority of nightmare on m street films in the entire franchise yes i fucking said it the first nightmare goaded second one decent dream warriors was sensational but that was about it and then new nightmare was on point so the fact that the 2010 nightmare on m street is a top five movie in the franchise to tell you something oh i'm sorry this one might be the one that really gets y'all mad the original it was fucking terrible i don't care <laughs> Judge me all you want. Don't give a damn. Unfollow me if need be. But I'm sorry. Tim Curry did a great job as Pennywise, but that's about it. And what made it worse is that I rewatched it the same night after I watched the 2017 remake. I was on my little Pennywise binge, you know what I'm saying? So after I left the movie theater, came home, I put on the 1990 version, thinking that I was gonna get the same feeling that I had when I was a kid, and I fucking didn't. I was pissed. Yeah, the remake shits on the original. Point blank. Period. No, no disrespect to Tim Curry. Though, no disrespect. And lastly. If Terrifier came out in the 80s, Art the Clown would be just as big, if not bigger, than Jason, Freddy, and Michael. Yeah, I'm staying the 10 toes on that one. First of all, Terrifier 1 and 2 are both love letters to the 80s slasher genre. And in my opinion, Art the Clown did his fucking job, bro. If that man came out in the 80s, he would be just as big or bigger than them boys. And I'm 100% certain that if Art the Clown came out in the 80s, it would probably be about 9 to 10 Terrifier movies in the whole franchise. Them sequels would have went fucking crazy. All right, so there goes my honest opinion about certain horror movies. If I made you angry, I'm sorry, but I'm not. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I've probably only seen one of those horror movies that he was talking about, and I think that's the Nightmare on Elm Street one. Other than that, I ain't seen none of them loves. I haven't even seen the It the Clown joint. If your kids tell you they're seeing something called the Window Man, get out of there. Here's why. On August 2nd of 2023, a woman named Merced that goes by La Chica Bona began to experience objects moving around the house and things turning on on their own. One day, while looking at her backyard, she notices upside down hand marks on a pole mm. as if someone had crawled down from the roof. Creeped out, but assuming it could just be her kids, she ignores it. On another day, while she's barbecuing near the area, her oldest son sees the marks and tells her, And those hand marks are from the window man. Now horrified by who or what this window man might be, one day, as she's making her son's bed, she sees this. 
large shock hand marks can be seen as if some prove Billy Eilish window man. Soul. Remember though now, mm -hmm. um, that I sold my soul to Satan. I wonder why. Now, what's up with the injections? That's the mm. second song depicting them. Hmm. That's two videos of her being injected with something. Black veins? Black goo? She gets injected by multiple hands, then she grows wings, falls from the sky. So far as lonely. Yeah, Billy, it's a rumor. It's just speculation. Nah, nah, nah. This is a scary story about the stare. A girl was sitting on a subway late one night when she noticed that the woman sitting across from her was staring intently at her. The woman was sitting between two old men. The girl kept looking away, but the woman wouldn't break eye contact with her. The stare was beginning to freak the girl out. At the next stop, a new passenger got on. It was a tall man in a gray trench coat. He sat down next to the girl. The woman paid no attention to the man in the trench coat. She just kept looking at the girl who was getting more and more creeped out as time went on. The two old men didn't even glance in her direction. She pretended not to notice, but each time she glanced at the strange woman, the stare continued. When the train was pulling into the next stop, the man in the trench coat got up to leave. Suddenly, he grabbed the girl's arm tightly and as the doors opened, he dragged her off the train. The doors shut and the train pulled off, leaving the girl alone on the platform with the man in the trench coat. She started screaming out loud, begging for help. But the man in the trench coat said, calm down, I just saved your life. I didn't mean to scare you, but I had to get you off that train. The woman sitting opposite of you was dead. Giants are actually real. Yes, you heard it right. Everyone knows that giants existed in the past, but what if they still existed in 2023? Mm -hmm. In January, a man named John Moore spotted a giant on top of a mountain in Canada. He posted a video of his discovery on TikTok, but shortly after he claimed that several black cars, all similar to typical CIA vehicles, were constantly parked outside his house. But what happens next will leave you speechless. A few days after this claim, he posted an extremely unusual video on his account, stating that the videos he had posted were fake, and many people claimed that he looked coerced. But that's not even the craziest part. After this video, no other videos appeared on his account. His followers were confused and started to investigate, and they discovered something extremely dark. They found out that John Moore had recently died under mysterious circumstances. Mm. What's your I take on this all. disturbing story? Tell me everything in the comments and share the video with your friends for a part. This horrifying legend happened. takes place in Canelton, Pennsylvania. I think I said that right. But this is the horrifying tale of Barbara Davidson. After the Revolutionary War, a family would settle down on a small piece of farmland. 1795 Canelton was a very, very small mining town just outside of Pittsburgh. And Barbara was the teenage daughter of Kara and Samuel. One weekend, Barbara's parents set off to go to Pittsburgh to get some supplies, and they left Barbara behind on the farm to tend to the animals as they had a thousand times before. They're only gone for a few days, and when they return back, they cannot find their daughter. They mm. look everywhere consistently for nearly a week, and they cannot find a her. Week? Eventually, something starts to smell a little off underneath their porch, and when they look, they find the gruesome discovery that their daughter Barbara had been shoved in the crawl space. But it gets even worse than that because Barbara was missing her head. This horribly gruesome crime was never solved and no one was charged. Yo. Locals state that even to this day on Canelton Road, you can see a fog no matter the weather. But it's not just a fog. In this fog, you will typically see some glowing red eyes. They aren't just floating red eyes though, they are attached to something. They are attached to a pig head. And that pig head is attached to Barbara. Now, where did this pig head come from? Many people believe that Barbara was wandering around looking for her own head and stumbled into a butcher shop and took a pig's head. And now that's what she wears instead of her own. And she is now lovingly known as the Pig Lady of Canelton. The follower that sent me this story told me that they had visited the road themselves and it feels off. Like the air is always consistently stale. If you guys have visited this area, please let me know if you've seen anything creepy. I need to visit this place. Mm. 
There'll be some crazy spirits out here. What's this? Have you ever seen this before? Yo, what? Yes, yeah, Santa, I have, and let's break it down. This is a very short clip of a TikTok video that I was tagged in numerous times. In this clip, we can see an infant with a large and swollen head. A lot of people in the comments were wondering what was going on and sympathizing with the child. This condition right here is called hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is much more common in children as well as infants. And as we can see from this diagram right here, it's the result of excess cerebrospinal fluid building up in the brain and pushing outwards. That's the most obvious of symptom fluid. of hydrocephalus is of course the enlarged head size. This is one of the primary causes of hydrocephalus. If you want to pause it to read it, you can. Oh man, I really can't even see that y'all. It says, uh, something and brain trauma can lead to bleeding inside brain ventricles which can cause ventricular swelling due to excessive cerebrospinal fluid this damages white matter in the brain and impairs the growth of cerebral cortex significantly impacting memory attention perception thought Oh, okay, that's just... So it impacts memory, attention, perception, thought, language, and consciousness. Hydrocephalus... Wait, ain't that how they said it? Cephalus? Oh. Hydrocephalus occurs as a secondary result of other brain injuries. This brain damage occurs in a feedback loop to cause more damage than usually... Basically, what they're saying is, because, you know, it's a little blurry, I ain't gonna lie. Um, it's caused from something else, you know, some trauma that happened to your brain, and then that's what happens, you know, that's a consequence of that. I don't want to make anybody mad, but initially, what I thought was, man, that baby got some alien DNA up in it. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? That's a mix, that's a hybrid baby, and it ain't work out right. But... I'm just saying, you know, that's initially, you know, like they got a whole definition for it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Y'all tell me. But in summation, if you've already received the brain injury, hydrocephalus is a result of that. So it doesn't really happen by itself, typically. A lot of people were also asking if this is a painful condition. And yes, unfortunately, it is. The odds of getting it are pretty low as well at one in 700. Family from the UK <clears throat> had been hearing strange noises around their house for several months. The house was pretty old, so they chalked it up to squeaky floorboards and rickety pipes until one day they heard something else. It's unclear what exactly they heard, but whatever it was, it scared them enough to leave their house that night. And once they got so far from the building, they saw this. I'll tell you something. It was inside there. The Look at that. Oh, no. Nah. Top window. Yeah. Bottom window. And it's at bottom the bottom, window. too? No way. I got chills looking at this, y'all. Literally. Goosebumps. Right now. Man, it disappeared. Top window. Right. Who the hell is going to zoom in on this? I'm leaving. I'm selling the house. Bottom We're moving window. up. I'm breaking my lease. Yep. Yeah. Ain't no way I'm going back in there. It's obvious that any one of us could fake this. What do you guys think?
that's like the most darkest deep Mario stuff I ever even heard in my life. I did not know Mario could be scary or spooky or anything like that. I mean, Luigi's Mansion maybe, but that's about it. Published on the dark web with the title, The Dark Web is the One and Only Truth. The name itself is chilling, promising to reveal hidden things. What you're about to see could change what you know. This video takes you to a strange corner of the internet. As the video continues, you have to choose. What? Follow the revelations of this mysterious video, or turn back the clock to stay in your reality. But beware, exploring the dark web can be risky. Sometimes the truth is disturbing and can shake up what you believe. Proceed with caution, because once you've seen what's in this video, there's no turning back. You may discover a truth that's hard to ignore, hidden in the shadows of the dark web. Some people are saying that this is one of the craziest videos out there when it comes to glitches in the matrix. Other people are saying this is actually an alien or a reptilian. I'm gonna roll the video and let you decide. This was captured by Pro. What's up, Denver. guys? Check this out. I'm watching this video on repeat. Your guys' comments are amazing. And someone just pointed something out that I cannot believe what I am seeing. All right, you see homeboys walk up to me with the dog, the strange dog, right? But check this out, right here at 42 seconds, you can see through dude with the glasses as he's walking past the tree. You can see the tree through him. Watch this right here. Here we go. Oh, snap. Hold up. Almost. As he's walking away, right there, you see through the tree. That's crazy. The Invisible Man, what's this? When the dark web reveals the truth, this video was posted with this title. It is the work of an anonymous source, hidden in the dark corners of the internet. In these enigmatic images, strange things appear that seem to be demons. Demons are symbols of darkness and malevolence. They are often linked to supernatural forces and evil powers that lurk beyond the veil of reality. In the dark web universe, Certain occult rituals and dark practices can be found, invoking these infernal creatures. The dark web can be a place where humanity's darkest fears and fantasies come to hmm. life, but it can also be a place where anonymity allows creativity to flourish, sometimes in macabre ways. Either way, it remains a territory to be explored with caution, as the dangers that reside there, whether tangible or imagined, can have very real consequences for those who dare to venture there. And watch the end. Yo, what's going on? It's, I gotta go on a dark web because this is some weird stuff. This man got goat legs. Read the urban legend you didn't know about. Tick Tick Japan. Tick Tick is said to be the host of a woman or high school girl who fell on a railway line and was cut in half by an oncoming train. The vengeful spirit outraged by her untimely death now haunts urban areas and train stations at night. Since she no longer has legs, she drags herself on her hands and elbows, which produces a chilling tick tick sound. Should you encounter tick tick, run if the malicious spirit catches you. She will slice you in half with a scythe. Although she lacks legs, she is extremely fast and has been known to keep up with cars. In some renditions of the story, she will ask you where her legs are, in which case you must reply Maishan Expressway in order to survive, in less hopeful iterations. Your only chance of survival is to outrun her, which is completely impossible. That's where do you think stuff. this person is from? What about this person? Australia. You might have guessed these people to be indigenous Australians, or perhaps people of the Pacific Islands, or even Africans. But they're actually Asian. members of various Adivasi tribes found in India. India. The people I showed you were specifically part of the Irula and Panya tribes. Now, according to the Out of Africa theory, humans first entered South Asia or India around 70,000 years ago. 
We refer to the people that formed a hunter-gatherer society in South Asia as the AASI. All South Asians partially descend from these early Homo sapiens that entered the subcontinent. Apparently, around 22% of my own DNA is derived from these ancient people. But the reason these tribal communities in India are so fascinating is because up to 70% of their DNA is derived from the AASI. And so some refer to them as the indigenous people. Have you ever stopped hmm. to wonder if monster creatures like the Megalodon and the Ogopogo and the Loch Ness Monster actually exist? Well, there should be videos of such creatures, and there are. I'm gonna show you guys a few of them and you tell me what you think in the end. Check this out. Aw oh, snap, what's that? What y'all think this is? Some type of creature. There's some crazy stuff in these waters. What was that? Y'all seen that thing duck? Hmm. This makes me never want to swim in any open water, y'all. Nope. Take me to the nearest swimming pool. Because I'm good on that one. You've probably heard of the Russian sleep experiment, but did you know that this terrifying viral creepypasta is actually getting made into a real life movie known as the Soviet sleep experiment? The Russian sleep experiment is where they took five prisoners and put them in a room for 30 days without sleep. They would not only be pumping oxygen into these rooms, but days. also pinning them with amphetamine to ensure them to never fall asleep. The goal of this whole entire process was to see how the human mind acted without sleep. And let's just say things got crazy. 2018, there was supposed to be a movie released, but it never did. And now we're finally getting a real life adaptation of this viral creepypasta. And yes, if you're wondering what happened to them after not sleeping for 30 days, well, this did. They ended up losing their minds. Literally. Screaming so loud that their vocal cords broke, coughing and throwing up blood. Most of them didn't even make it. Only one did. At least according to the creepypasta. And let's just say the run-in that he had with said doctors that were doing this to him weren't so nice. The story goes that this last prisoner actually ripped apart every single one of the doctors and claimed that he was the embodiment of evil, the mind without sleep. Comment down mm. below if you guys are going to check this out and follow for more. Mm. Sorry, 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 sorry. Dang, famous TikToker, huh? As of literally two days ago, this famous TikToker and her mother have been convicted of murder. Hi, my name is mm. Ethan, and this week we are diving feet first into disturbing TikTok murders. Mahek Bukhari was a lifestyle and fashion influencer who had a little over 130,000 followers. In September of 2021, she posted this TikTok of her and her mother, 46-year-old Ansreen Bukhari. Despite Ansreen being married for over 20 years, she started a secret relationship with 21-year-old Saqib Hussein. In January of 2022, mm. she decided to end the secret affair however he would not let her and he threatened to share the very inappropriate pictures he had of her to her husband she then paid him three thousand dollars to keep his mouth shut however she received no confirmation that the images were actually deleted just a month later on february 11th 2022 sakib and his childhood friend were driving on the road to meet two women who were fake profiles created by the mom and daughter he was then followed by two mysterious cars and then called police saying and i quote they're trying to ram me off the road. They're trying to kill me. I'm going to die, end quote. The cars rammed into them, causing them to go off the road. They crashed and both of them passed away. Police quickly mm. traced it back to Mahek and her mother. And now after 18 long months, they are finally being convicted of murder. That's crazy. She was not trying to let that info If you out. get a feeling like somebody's watching you at night, this could be why. A YouTube user by the name Mr. Spouter has been waking up to strange sounds around his house late at night. And after looking around but finding no one, he 
decides to record a video to see if he can capture whatever's in his house. Yo, did y'all see that? I swear I thought I seen something. I could be tripping. I got goosebumps again, y'all. Freaking myself out too. He doesn't notice, but inside his spare right there. room, you see that? a dark figure can be seen watching him. Did Mr. Spouter come face Look. to face with oh an intruder? God. Or could it that? be something evil showing it? Goosebumps. Hello. Do you want to play a game? Let's play hide and seek with my Chucky haunted doll. What do you say? Let's go. Now, these are the rules. You and Chucky are gonna hide and I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna count to 10. And when I count to 10, I'm gonna come look for y'all. You have to hide, okay? If I find you in less than two minutes, what do you mean you don't wanna hide with Chucky? It's gonna be fine, don't worry. If I find you in less than two minutes, I win. Okay, ready? I'm gonna count. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready or not, here I come. Damn. Okay, where could she be? I'm guessing she went in the room. And found you, Chucky. <laughs> That's creepy. No, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> found you. Why'd you make it so easy? Did you help Chucky? What do you mean? You shouldn't have- This is the scary story about okay. the call. There was a girl named Sophia who was in elementary school. It was the end of lunch break and she was sitting in class talking to her friends. When her teacher suddenly came over to her with a pale, serious face. She said, Sophia, I have some bad news. Your mother was in an accident at work. Get your things and go to the principal's office now. Sophia was shocked and didn't know what to think, but she packed her bag and went anyways. The principal was waiting for Sophia in his office. He said, I just got off the phone with your father. He told me your mother was badly injured. He's rushing to the hospital right now and he's going to pick you up on his way. You will wait outside and he will pick you up. Now hurry along. Sophia then said, but sir, I don't have a father. We are a single parent family. Mm. My dad died when I was a baby. The principal's jaw then dropped. After that, Sophia's mother then came to the school and complained. And she was completely fine and wasn't injured at all. The police were then called and nobody was able to walk home that day. To this day, Sophia still wonders who the mystery man was who called and what he planned to do with her once he managed to get his- was a woman going for a nighttime run, preparing herself by stretching her legs. As she begins her jog, she hears a loud truck horn and at the same time, a man overtakes her on the running track. Concerned, she looks to her left to check for an accident on the road. When Where'd she turns her gaze forward again, the man who passed her is nowhere in sight. Suddenly, the same man wearing a helmet overtakes her. Oh, no. <sighs> she glances back, searching for anyone else trailing behind. Once more, when she no. looks ahead, the man with the helmet has vanished. Yeah. Uh, uh. Uh. For the third time, the man overtakes her, but this time he abruptly stops when the woman stops running. To her shock, the man starts running backward in an unnatural manner, revealing its inhuman nature. What? <laughs> he started backpedaling like a defensive back. <laughs> Fear overwhelms her and she instinctively runs away in panic. She rushes into her apartment building and enters the elevator, desperate to reach the safety of her home. However, to her horror, the strange creature has already reached her floor. Oh, no. She hastily exits the elevator and sprints towards her apartment. But when she turns around, then the creepy creature can be seen chasing after her. Backwards, too. I can't live in no apartment building like this, y'all. That's a huge apartment building. <laughs> she continues her way into her apartment, but just as she turns to close the door behind her, the mysterious entity can be seen standing ominously at her door. This is a scary story about April and her, scary. and it's absolutely shocking. There was a bus driving late at night, and it was completely packed full of people. 
Suddenly, an old woman on the bus became ill and she asked the bus driver to stop the bus. They were on a country road surrounded by a forest, so the driver told her to wait. But the old woman began to throw a fit, screaming and yelling at the bus driver, demanding him to stop the bus. The bus driver then pulled over to the side of the road and the old woman got out and ran into the woods. When the old woman came back from the woods, she was holding a little girl's hand who was crying. When they got back on the bus, everybody asked the little girl what was wrong. She said her mother brought her into the woods and placed her on a tree, then tied a rope around her neck and said, Whenever you get bored, just jump. Don't worry, mm. it won't hurt. The old uh, woman said wow. she didn't know why, but she felt something was wrong in the woods. And when she got in the woods, she caught the girl while she was jumping. The bus driver then began to drive again, and he suddenly saw a young woman standing on the road. He then stopped the bus. When the young woman got on the bus, the little girl stood up and said, Mommy, you promised- I don't know if I can visit me. Uh-uh. Why? Bro, they have the scariest urban legends. For real? Yeah, they got La La Chusa, which is a shape-shifting witch that looks like an owl and is seven feet tall with the face of a woman. And you're not supposed to go outside if you hear whistling in your window. What else? Oh, and La La Rona. She usually stays near bodies of water. She wears a white gown, long hair, and she's always crying for her children that she actually drowned. So you're next if you see her while driving on the side of the road. Oh my god. There's like this abandoned Disney park in Veracruz, Mexico. What about it? It has a statue that moves at night. There was two people exploring the abandoned park and caught it on video. Fam, you gotta check this out. No, 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 aguanta, aguanta, aguanta. Deja, enfoque, deja que mi cámara enfoque bien, deja que mi cámara enfoque bien. Deja que mi cámara enfoque bien, güey, eso no es el volador. No digas perras mamadas, <laughs> No digas mamadas, Mm-mm. <laughs> 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 Wey, es que era el vestido también así, wey. Amarillo. And it's static, frozen. I'm good. I'm good on Mexico. But they do have beautiful women. You right. We might have to risk. This picture was taken at the Pipestone National Monument in Minnesota. You notice anything? Let's look closer. Yeah, that's a closer. demon. Closer! Ah, what the heck is that thing? Ah, I don't know if that's a zombie, a demon, or something else, but stay away from me! Did you know in the Victorian era that it was actually really common to take pictures with the dead? At the time, photography Creepy. was still a relatively new technology, and as we all know, you used to have to stand really, really still. Bind that with the fact that there were a lot of ways that you could pass in the Victorian era, and death was actually really common. And then one day, somebody thought getting pictures would be a really great way to memorialize your recently dead loved ones. And just like today, how we have tons of selfie and video trends, this started the Victorian death photo trend. It became so common and such a thing that a lot of times people who had their first interaction with any type of photography was for this. Some people would even take pictures with their recently passed loved ones. Photographers would often take pictures of people and it would kind of just look like they were sleeping or they would even go so far to pose them to look like they were still alive. Mm. Sometimes photographers would even after the photo was printed paint open eyes on the people to make it look like they were still alive. This actually made for really good photography subjects at the time because since you had to stay really really still, some of the best quality pictures that we have from that era are from people who are not actually alive. Most of the time people couldn't actually hold still for as long as you needed to take a picture, so most of the time there was a little bit of blur in a picture, but whenever you took a picture like this, the image was crystal clear. People would actually spend hours preparing one of their loved ones for this type of photo shoot. And while for a lot of us today, we would honestly kind of think this is a little creepy. Not really, because they do it for funerals. It's no different. You know, you, you they spend hours, if not days, getting a person together for you, everyone to come and look at them. You know, take pictures, whatever they're going to do. You know, it's a different time. But yeah, it's not that creepy to me. It doesn't seem odd at all we have pictures of our loved ones that we get to take throughout their entire lifetime but at this time it was actually really difficult and expensive to get your picture taken so this was a really great way for people to be able to actually remember their loved ones so if you ever see a picture from the victorian area and the picture is really really clear that person might not have actually been alive a couple of months ago mo owens went motorbiking deep into the woods and heard what sounded like someone screaming at the time, people thought it could be a bobcat. Mm-mm. No, -mm. I said help. Hello? Well, his subscribers asked him to go back again, and he did. And this is what happened. Check this out. Oh, God. There's even more bones than last time. Bones? 
Looks like we've already passed it a while ago, but that tree is gone. Oh! It's just dark as hell in here. I'm probably going to turn around soon. Yeah, he tripping. Oh, there's two ways. Holy crap, dude. This trail going on forever. It just got quiet. It just got really quiet really fast. Nope. Time to go. You see that? Man, look, I keep getting goosebumps watching this, y'all. Look, and it won't even start? Oh, heck no. Nah. That was my cue to leave. That's a weird Definitely. looking bobcat. Oh, no. No, 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 no. On January 2014, Brucho Syndicate captured a very strange phenomenon in the middle of a frozen pond somewhere in Europe. He was walking his dog, and it was a very cold day, and he spotted this bizarre water hole in the middle of a frozen pond, and inside of it, well, this is what he captured on camera. Check this out. Yo, something was down there. What is that? I see it moving. See what? What is that? What y'all think that is? It's un. That's just water, right? It's not ice or anything. That's creepy. What the fuck? Vintage audio clips exactly. are haunting. That's how I feel. A castrato was a male singer who was castrated before puberty to retain the higher pitched soprano voice back in the 17 to mid 1800s. Many of the children died due to this barbaric tradition, but the mm. ones that survived did in fact keep their voice, and here is the last known recording of a castrato, and this man was in his 40s. Armin Mibas. Hmm. He received international Animal. attention because he found somebody on the internet that was willing to be murdered and eaten by him. This was all voluntary. According to sources, he posted on the Cannibal Cafe and he was looking for somebody 18 to 20. The Cannibal Cafe. That's a real thing? I, we got cafes for cannibals now. I, wow. Five and very fit. A 43 year old engineer from Berlin messaged him and they met soon after. I've read a lot of sources and there is a video apparently. In the video, Armin cuts off the man's nether region and both of the men try to eat it together. Mm. They were even going into detail about how chewy and tough it was. Mm. And apparently they fed the leftover to the dog. This isn't even the most gruesome part though. He took the man that volunteered to the bathroom, stabbed him in the throat, and then hung him up on a meat hook. There's apparently a four mm. hour long video of all of this documented that was never released and will never be released for obvious reasons. Over the course of the year, Armin stored all the meat in the fridge. In total, he ate about 44 pounds of flesh. Now, even though the man volunteered, this was highly illegal. And Armin posted again in that Cannibal Cafe forum. A college student alerted the authorities on this, and the authorities arrested him in December of 2002. He is serving life in prison now. And reminder, these videos are for informational purposes only. Mm -hmm. Let me know what you guys think about nasty. this in the comment section below and what you want to see next. How animals go to sleep. I don't know why you're watching this because you only go to sleep two days a week. Join the Discord. You got a giraffe now. Giraffes got long um, tongues. So I'm really curious. Yo, neck don't hurt. My neck would beat my ass. I ain't gonna <laughs> we got whales. If I did that, I'm drowning. Yo, what's this? Resident of a native population village in Peru. Claim that they are being attacked and terrorized by aliens. 
seven foot tall beings that some of them are claiming that are aliens anyways. This strange case started for them last month. The people living in the district of Alto Nane, they began encountering inhuman looking entities wearing some kind of green body armor that they described looking like the, the green goblin mm. and also with their ability to levitate. They say when you look at them, you could see them like their feet wasn't completely on the floor. They were hovering. Their community leader said these things are aliens. He said they seemed armored like the Green Goblin from Spider-Man. He said he shot one twice and it just got back up and walked away. There's another case in the village where a girl claims that she was cut at the neck by one of these aliens. What do you guys think about Peru and their invasion? Mm. Do you guys think it's aliens or some people are saying something about something called Project Blue Bean? But let me- Scary TikTok video. Like I ain't gonna lie, I was- Probably within the last six months, I've been talking about visiting Peru prior to any knowledge about any alien invasion or anything like that. But I just want to go down there for some reason, you know. You know how you have a call and just like, hey, you should go to Peru. It just random in them up, but that is crazy. What do you guys think? Y'all think it's an actual alien invasion down there? I mean, it's possible. It's a lot of stuff that goes on in South America, and we don't hear anything about it. Video Spark 122. Picture just yeah. fell. Oh. That is a video that was supposedly taken off the dark web. You know, I've always wondered, what is the dark web? So from my research, it says that the dark web is a part of the internet that is not indexed by search engines. Given its anonymous nature, the dark web is also used for buying and selling illegal drugs, weapons, passwords, and even stolen identities. It gets worse. It gets worse, like trading and selling people for weird things. Mm. Have you ever like seen an influencer talk about how much they bought a girlfriend or a clown or a alien from off the dark web? A lot of people think that this might be a joke sometimes, but it's sometimes it's actually real. Yeah. Things that people fail to understand about the dark web sometimes is that it was actually made by the US government. You should not be afraid to go on the dark web because it's not illegal to go on the dark web. However, it is illegal to purchase things on the dark web, trade things, or to get any type of illegal information. There's even rumors that some of the challenges I do is from the dark web. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Did you know that celebrating one's mm. birthday at the stroke of midnight could invite spirits of the deceased to join in the festivities? According to the legend, choosing to celebrate your birthday at midnight opens a metaphysical portal between the realms of the living and the dead. This belief stems from the idea that spirits are more active during the witching hour, making it possible for them to interact with the living world during the time of transition. Legends often suggest that these spectral guests might engage in various forms of supernatural activity. Objects might move on their own, eerie sounds could fill the air, or attendees might catch fleeting glimpses of ethereal figures dancing among the living. The legend often plays on the fear of the unknown and the mystique surrounding the supernatural. Different variations of the legend emphasize the potential mischievous or malevolent nature of the ghostly attendees. Some stories depict them as playful pranksters, while others portray them as vengeful spirits seeking to cause disturbances. These tales serve to heighten the tension and create a sense of foreboding associated with celebrating birthdays at midnight. If you managed to reach the end of this video, and it's your birthday, I want to wish you the happiest of birthdays, and I hope that your day is filled with blessings, happiness, and laughter. I'm a truck driver <laughs> in the state of Texas. This happened two years ago. I was carrying six pallets of tomatoes down towards Loreto. It was around 11 p.m. and I stopped at a truck stop to get coffee and candy. I was on the 59 going towards my destination when out of nowhere I see lights coming from the side of the road. I thought it was just a car that might be broken down, but it wasn't. As I get closer to it, I see a girl with a dress just looking at my truck. As soon as I pass it, I hear yelling coming from behind my truck. That's when I speed out of there, in shock. I pull over two miles to take a break of what I just witnessed as I was passing the city of Freer, Texas. All the horror goes away, so I feel a little bit more relaxed. I get to my destination at around three in the morning and I just call it a night there. To this day, I think I drove right past La Llorona, but I don't know. And I also refuse to drive towards that highway 
because that's the route I don't like, especially after- With the context of what I'm about something? to tell you, this picture becomes extremely eerie. So Tamla Horsford, she was a 40 year old mom from Georgia. She had gone out with one of her friends to go and celebrate her birthday, right? And have a sleepover. We want you to come, right? So this is Tamla at- There's already something wrong with that picture, y'all. I ain't gonna say it, but if you don't see it, you just don't see it. And if you know, then you know. But there's something wrong with that picture. The sleepover that she was invited to. Just a lot of people on Twitter and social media have noticed she's the only black lady in the room. I ain't even been about to say it. to the public is that around 2 a.m. She said that she was going to go outside, smoke a cigarette, and then head to bed. What's weird and not really like clear about this case is that at least two of the husbands of the other women were there, even though they weren't supposed to be. So at around 1.57 a.m., the security system picked up the back door opening once, closing again, opening again one more time and closing for the last time. Tamla's body was found face first at the bottom of the stairs. 7.30 a.m. the next morning, one of the ladies that were at the party woke up and- Yo, we gotta go, we gotta go watch the full video on that one because that one's messed up. Yo, she should've never went to that sleepover. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Oh my god! So some people wanted me to talk about the whole shark tragedy in Egypt. If you didn't know, a man was mauled to death by a shark in an Egyptian resort, Hurghada. And it turns out it was a tiger shark that did it. The thing with tiger sharks is they're walking- they don't walk. They're, they're, they're like garbage disposals with gills and they'll eat, and I really do mean this, literally anything they can swallow. Like we found things like license plates, tires, bags of money, the chicken coops, uh, even a full suit of armor in a tiger shark's stomach. They truly do not care. Tiger sharks may not actively try to murk people, but they also don't discriminate, and they'll usually do the whole exploratory bite thing before they realize that the object isn't something they normally eat. The problem is, tiger sharks are so big that sometimes one bite is really all it takes. Even yeah. if it isn't, if you panic and start thrashing around, which like 99% of people would do because, you know, a shark just bit you, all you're doing is triggering the prey response in a shark, and it's pretty much game over at that point. Yo, Especially that since they're one of the few sharks that will 100% attack you unprovoked. So even though it is really rare, and I'm not like just saying that to minimize it, the reason it makes international news is because when it does happen, it's bad. Also, they ended up catching the shark, dragging it to shore, and beating it to death. And apparently they're gonna mummify the shark and put it in a museum, so yeah, that's uh... Hmm. That's a thing. Look at the teeth on that mug. See? That's why I don't go in the oceans. I'm straight. Land My person. Land Jim. being. Ever since I was a kid, I've always experienced paranormal things. So now that I'm older, it's something that doesn't really scare me anymore. This experience is the one that has stuck with me the most, and was the start of me experiencing paranormal events afterwards. I was about seven years old, and this took place at my grandma's house. It was a family party, and it was already dark. My cousins and I were playing hide and seek, and keep in mind that there's a long driveway where you can park your cars. My grandma's house is right next to a very old tunnel as well, which was creepy too. So at this point we're playing hide and seek, and I went to the end of the driveway, which is close to the tunnel to hide. I hid right next to one of the cars that was parked. And as soon as I turned to look behind me, I see what in my head was the devil walking across the driveway near me. Its skin looked black and red, and its knees were somewhat bent, but still standing at the point of its toes. I remember looking at it, and the eyes were dark red, and it had sharp horns. I see it smile at me with sharp teeth, and it turned and walked away, still in the same creepy position. I remember I quickly ran away and told my parents, and I remember them not paying attention to what I had to say. But years later, they told me that that same creature, or whatever it was, has appeared to other family members. And they have also been scratched. And it was once captured in a photo that to this day I'm still trying to find. Hmm, that's some creepy stuff. Family just be going through all this, this stuff, This is f***ing crazy. So you may have seen this video from a few years back. A little girl claiming that her true identity is somebody named Anjali Grace Dye. It says that she was from Sand Springs and oh, she yeah. lived with her grandfather. Yo, I believe this little girl. I seen this, right? I seen this video. I, it just, man, look, it confirmed a lot of stuff for me in all honesty. I'm gonna let y'all watch it before I go into it though. But that she died in a bloody house. Our house is bleeding everywhere. Remember on the street? Your mom's dead? Yeah. My grandfather and my mom. So now I live with you. What's your name? 
Angelie Grace died. Who's Angelie? Me. Just a few months back, an alleged obituary came out for a woman from Sand Springs named Angelie Grace died. And articles were being written that Angelie had died from severe injuries and a tragic murder in Sand Springs. The mother of the little girl actually called the Sand Springs Police Department, trying to confirm if this was actually true. But to their knowledge, they couldn't find anybody in their database with that name. Could this be an actual story of reincarnation? The video of this little girl was posted in 2019, and it wasn't until four years later or this supposed person had died. This is all true. The timeline doesn't add up. Demon in male form that tries to have sex with women while they sleep. It's also the name of a pretty decent band. In Latin, it roughly translates to a nightmare-induced demon, and its earliest known mentions of a demon come from, if you can guess it, where do you think it came from? from mesopotamia there you go circa 2400 bce it's often believed these demons want to have offspring with sleeping women and there's actually this crazy legend in brazil that there's an amazon river dolphin or the boto cor de rosa which means pink porpoise that's mm -hmm. part siren and part incubus the legend says that this river dolphin can shape shift into a charming handsome young man and it goes around town and seduces young women and it impregnates them. Some areas called the creature Encantado, which translates to enchanted or charmed. In some areas, a fatherless child might still be called child of the Boto. According to legend, repeated sex with an incubus can lead to failing health, impaired mental mm. state, or even death. How do you know what an incubus is though? Dang. Here's the most terrifying video I could find on the dark web. <laughs> In the deep, unfathomable darkness of the dark web, lurks a type of video that haunts the minds of the few souls foolhardy enough to venture into its meanders. These anonymous videos, emerging like furtive shadows, defy all human comprehension. Their origin remains shrouded in an aura of mystery, an enigma carefully preserved by those who create them. Each video is an unsettling journey into the unknown, an ephemeral nightmare that escapes all logic. Chaotic images materialize and dissipate in the blink of an eye, leaving behind a lingering sense of unease. Indistinguishable faces melt into distorted landscapes, while unintelligible whispers slip in like whispers from another world. Watch the end and you'll understand why. Yeah, I don't know what that was on the dark web, but... I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I've never even been on the dark web. I didn't think it was an actual real thing. I just always heard about it. But apparently, there's a lot of videos on the dark web. If you've been on the dark web before, comment down below. What's the creepiest thing that you've seen? But yeah, guys, these are some of the most scary and horrific TikTok videos that you probably should not watch before bed. If you like the content, don't forget to subscribe, turn your notification bell on, and until next time, YouTube, peace.